I am so glad you're here today because we're going to get into a wonderful conversation that I believe I'm about to have with my special guest, Gabe Perot. Now, Gabe Perot has, my goodness, he's got about 2 million subscribers and followers just on YouTube alone. And he's got several other platforms that he's making a great impact on the culture, especially with the young generation. Now, Gabe has great understanding of many controversial conspiracies, many things like this. And I'm hoping to go down a few roads with him today uh, that maybe we'll even get into some of the UFO narrative and maybe we'll get into some of the Nephilim conversation and go down some of those roads and we'll just see where it leads. And please, whenever we go down roads that we're about to go down, God willing, just realize we stay in the Bible. We're talking about it because so much is happening in the culture and people are now going to demand answers. Now, just before I bring Gabe on also, please, if you would, repost this, share this somewhere. Somebody's going to be either interested, irritated, or really enjoy what we have to say. And maybe it'll bring some information that brings peace to you. Um, in addition to that, thank you for being a partner. If you're a partner in this ministry, I want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for all that you're doing to help us reach people by the millions. Um, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, please do so by going to Joseph. Z.com. We're so thankful to have you with us and you'll hear from us. If you partner here today, you'll hear from us. Our team will reach out to you and we just want to bless you and stand with you. Now, please repost this. And if you would, please help me welcome my very dear friend, Gabe Perot. Well, I'm so happy that you're here with me, Gabe. Thank you, Gabe Perot, for joining me today. I believe you have something powerful for our audience. So welcome, my friend. Joseph, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited and I'm super thankful to be a part of this ministry and this reach to everyone watching. What a blessing it is to join in with you on this. Oh, so grateful, Gabe. You know, uh, it, it's a fascinating story that you have and what you've carried through the culture and what's happening right now. God has positioned you in such a place for such a time as this. And, you know, for those of you who if you don't know, and you probably do know, uh, Gabe Perot has, you know, a couple million followers right now on, on several platforms, and the Lord is just giving him a voice to the culture. So I, I brought you on, Gabe, because I really wanted to talk, and I wanted our audience to hear some really hot button topics today, which you've researched and you've got like a now word about. And so I kind of do it from a prophetic space and you do it from not only a prophetic space, but a kind of a now word for the culture. You just have the ear of the culture. And so I'd like to get into some of that. And I guess, Gabe, where do you see the culture right now? You know, you're seeing it from a point of view in your generational lens. Where do you see things? Where are we? Where are we headed? How do you see it right now? Absolutely. Well, Joseph, I really believe that the heart of America is being ripped from the ones, the, the, the people that love our country, that love our God. It's being ripped in the mainstream media, the news, the messaging, the education, the spheres of influence that we've allowed the next generation to go under has taken our very footholds. And what's going on right now with the media and with everything that's being portrayed is these two things. The heart of America, the good old family, the good old hard worker working in the um, the the factory in Ohio, the the farm worker out in Iowa, yeah. the um, I mean, you name it that that type of family, that type of foundation of a mom and a dad, and a, just the family that just loves wants to go to church and work and just make a living and spread the gospel is being ripped from the way that we are messaging all of our news and all of our things. Wow! And um, I think that really is the is the heart of why we see things that are going on in Ohio where they're telling the residents that the air is fine, that it's safe, come back, Crazy. everybody. It's all good. Meanwhile, dogs are dropping dead. Right. Meanwhile, in fact, even I was talking to Roger Stone yesterday. He told me that I believe his um, daughter's dog, sure enough, was a great dog, healthy, all of a sudden drop, dropped on, just like that in Ohio. Unbelievable. Um, things going, I mean, I, yeah, it's you just, I really believe the that. heart is being ripped. You're right. And I agree. I couldn't agree more. What's happening there? Just we take Ohio specifically, you know, and, and you've been watching the news. There's so much going on even now all over the, the world and the nation. But specifically with that event, you know, that that's a really if I understand it well, that's a very conservative area. And it's almost yes. interesting that they're just kind of like, well, you know, we don't need to really. It's probably OK if we let that one ride. Fascinating. And I feel mm -hmm. it could very well have been induced. Do you think yeah, they did no. on purpose? Absolutely. Again, they're 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 coming after the heartland of America. Yep. I'm not going. I'm not going to say. See, 
I don't believe that the leaders of our country and the people in different places are that smart to unite together and figure all these things out <laughs> and have that good of a force to take us down. That being said, so I'm not going to say that I have physical evidence or, you know, that don't people should go look up news, but I, yeah. I will say that the spiritual forces are at work to right. take down the heartland of America. Well put. And, and, and we really, we really can see that with just so much going on. That's how I would describe it. So I want to, I want to get into a few topics here with you today because you do a lot of research and I'm actually very impressed with your research. You are like journalism level and beyond. And then with a very unique take on things that, and you bring it in such a way that people can hear it, they get educated and it's hard to refute what you put out Gabe. And so is it okay if we talk about a few controversial things that I believe are not only false flags, they're also real, and we're going to try to make sense of some of where this starts and stops. I want to just Absolutely. kind of come right at it by talking about a very controversial subject that we've talked about a lot on our program. I know you have, and that is the UFO phenomenon. And you know, we, we're seeing that the, the balloons in the sky, the things that are happening, and then they're saying, boy, we just can't quite put our finger on what we got here in all this. Gabe, help us. What do we got going on? Absolutely. Well, we'll first start out with a little weather balloon from China. Wasn't the only UFO that they somehow identified in this past week. In fact, they shot down three UFOs of which they're reasoning now that they don't have any remains of those three UFOs is, well, it was bad weather. Well, it yeah. was cold. Well, it was icy. We don't have the remains. We don't know where they went. In our own country, they were too high. They were, and they even, even, even guys, by the way, these are military officials. This isn't some conspiracy theorist online telling you this news. I'm presenting to you. I mean, even this is the office of the director of national intelligence. Um, this is the official report they gave out. Get this two weeks before all this happened. So Two or three weeks ago, I did an episode on this, and all, all of a sudden, we have all these UFOs coming. But the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, um, they actually received 350 new reports of what they ident are, are unidentified aerial phenomenon, commonly known as UFOs, since March of 2021, roughly half of which are completely unexplained. And uh, so, again, these reports have been increasing every single year. In fact, I believe they received half of those reports just in one year, uh, this wow. recent year or so. Wow. We're really, yeah, since 2021. So we're really going through these times where the the realms of un, of non-understanding are finally being said. Yep. So this UFO thing is something, you know, and for our viewers who are watching right now, and by the way, thank you for being here. And please repost this and share this. If you're watching with us right now, you're joining us live. But please, if you would, consider something. The Lord is trying to expose something and bring something out. So prophetically, Gabe, I've released several words over the last few years that the Lord shared with us, and I believe we were supposed to share, so I did. I've written out UFOs probably dozens of times on our whiteboard throughout the last several years of our broadcast, because I believe it is a last day's deception. And I'll, I'll share a couple yes. points, and I want you to comment and please give us your insight. And what I believe it could be is one of like three things possibly or more one, it could be technology we have no idea about, just technology they, they shoot across the sky. Two, it could be a marshaled holographic type thing with Project Blue Beam, all this type of narrative, or it legitimately could be, and maybe even is, demonic entities that are interdimensional based on fallen angel, either technology or information, and they manifest at will, and they do things, and it blows people's minds. And whatever it is it's going to be used as a false flag narrative gabe your comments educate us absolutely well first i'll say to anyone watching you might i'll be about to scroll off this because you're thinking that we're just going crazy now that we lost <laughs> our minds well i'll tell you who who wasn't crazy and i'll present to you the facts uh roughly uh, more than thousands of years ago there were these great pyramids built and i know this might seem a little bit different but because we're also going to be getting into cern here because people that don't think CERN is real or what is going on, CERN is a very real thing that there are some very um, interdimensional things going on there. Yep. But I want to touch on this for one moment because it goes to show how there was another realm getting to us. The Great Pyramid, it encodes pi, the golden ratio, and Euler's number. Get this. The Great Pyramid encodes the equi equatorial circumference and the polar radius of the Earth. So the very measurements of the Great Pyramid just so happened to be the exact measurements as the radius of the earth, um, obviously in ratio. Um, the, get this, this is what really gets me. The speed of light, 2,000, or 299,792,458 meters per second. Four, and then get this, so that's the speed of light. The coordinates of the Great Pyramid, 
29.9792458, the same exact numbers How about that? as the speed of light. And by the way, guys, you can look this up. You can check this out. These are scientists that are giving off these numbers. These are not religious fanatics. And uh, they still have not been able to explain how they were able to extract thousands of tons of stone hundreds of miles away and get it to that exact spot. They, they have no explanation for it. Well, it points to um, – well, I will tell you what we do have the explanation for is the written word of God. And in Genesis 6, 3, it told us about this, the, the, the Nephilim that came down, and it told us about this interlocking between the spiritual realm versus the physical realm. And I know everyone thinks, well, didn't the Nephilim go away after the flood? Well, yes, but how do you explain for Goliath? How do you explain for the giants in the land that Israel found when they were going in there, right? It, oh, almost like there's a connection there. Um, so I know I'm getting into a lot of stuff here, but I'll, I'll just leave it at this. <laughs> If, if you think that UFOs aren't real because you can't see them, then maybe love isn't real because you can't see it. Maybe uh, maybe joy isn't real because you can't <laughs> see it with your physical eyes. So so we'll hit, hit right off, that right off the bat. But again, um, I think what's really going on with these UFOs is even the U.S. military is now coming out. And the, actually, a general two days ago actually said that they are not ruling out all ability that these UFOs could really I mean, be anything. From the US mainstream general. media, they're saying that. I read that that they're saying it right from the mainstream media now, U.S. general, we are not ruling out anything, including aliens. No, absolutely. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll get that out. Senior, USO, C, senior U.S. general says not ruling anything out. Um, the U.S. Air Force general overseeing North American airspace. So I, if that's not a verified source, he said on Sunday after a series of shootdowns of unidentified objects, he would not rule out aliens or any other explanation yet, deferring to U.S. intelligence experts. So again, to anyone watching, I mean, this just really, again, this isn't a religious fanatic. This is the U.S. General of the Air Force in the North America. <laughs> wow. But what really what really got me, Joseph, and this is kind of breaking news yesterday, the senators met for the meeting with all the uh, the Army you know, people. And Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana said the briefing left him with more questions than answers. Get this. He noted the biggest takeaway from the briefing is that those types of flying objects discovered last week have been flying over us for years with government knowledge, yet it's never told to the American people. And get this, all the senators left the meeting, both Democrat and Republican. We're not even partisan here. Guess what they said? They said, why are we withholding this from the American people? Wow, look at that. Look at that. So it starts, it begs so many questions. It begs what's going on. But those who've had discernment, now you got the crazy yeah. uh, fly by the seat of their pants, goofy revelatory people that don't really have a, a good grounding in the word of God. But then you do have the legitimate that sense this stuff happening. And we know from the word of God, it's real. You know, uh, interdimensional beings, and Gabe, here's one of my takes on it. And I want you to please comment yeah. on this. In Genesis 6, when this stuff began to happen, the crazy intermingling of DNA uh, with this fallen angel stuff, you can go into it, it gets into some wild stuff, but it's still there. And like you said, Goliath, all of it, it is possible that these demon spirits, now we're going to get on a limb here, okay? But it is possible these demon spirits that were in giants, they were in Nephilim, which consequently when the children of Israel went into the land, they said, we we're like grasshoppers in their sight. Some people believe they were cannibalistic. They ate people, they did stuff. And it's probably why they made those comments that when they were killed, these giants were, their life was snuffed out. The spirits that were in them were left to wander the earth. And now you see these little gray people and whatnot that are like avatars, maybe with some weird angel technology. And that's what these alien entities are now with demon embodiment your thoughts on all that and that's maybe how we're getting here no absolutely i mean that's jesus jesus said in the scripture he said if a, if a demon you know leaves if a house really passes and, and you clear out the house the demons go somewhere yep. and they'll even come back to the place so that recognizes jesus himself talking about how when there's spirits in someone or a human flesh when the human flesh falls, that's why there's still our spirits. And that also explains why we have had, for as long as humans have lived, we have had this understanding that, um, well, I'll say that, I'll say it like this, we've had a misunderstanding. You know, we've had so many times where people die and then you say, oh, well, their spirits are in the, are in the funeral or in the uh, memorial service, in the graves. Oh, uh, maybe my loved one is here in the house with me. And, and we have, what is it? It's familiar spirits for, that want to make you think that the person is still hovering yeah. and yeah. Um, because they, they were in the person themselves. 
Yep. And so that's why we feel that, oh, maybe my loved one is still here on earth. It's because there's a familiar spirit that works through that mis- Gabe, misconception. That's so it's that's very insightful because, you know, as strange as this sounds and as strange as we're talking, uh, you have to understand something is that right now we're seeing a collision of light and darkness and the spirit yes. of Antichrist yes. is pounding on the gates of yes. reality, wants to come into this world so bad. Now the spirit is here, mm. there's not a manifestation of the Antichrist yet, but in this, all of these things are just bursting onto the scene. Yeah. And I believe the deceived, those that have the spirit of Antichrist in them, will play along and allow a false flag narrative. As we said, one way or another, they're gonna use this for their benefit. Now I believe this plays into CERN. You'd mentioned CERN a moment ago, and CERN, I believe this is my take, is a little bit like the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11, and they're messing with things. Educate us a little bit on this for our audience today, if you would, Gabe. Absolutely. Well, what they're doing is they're they're combining atomic materials because they want to reach another dimension. So they looked into these atomic materials and they found, okay, well, they're made up like this. They, they're they shaped like this. They they have this type of energy that gives them the, the exact um, formation in which they can keep on going. And so they looked into this and so they said, well, instead of just playing along with the game of the nuclear atoms, instead of just playing along with the physical game, why don't we make our own game? Why don't we recreate these to fit and shape a new dimension that we know we can't reach? Wow. And, um, and I'll actually, I'll defer back to you on this one because I'm actually, I'm not a, I'm not as an expert in CERN as I am in other areas, sure, but I'll sure. defer back to you because actually in your book, you brought up something about how scientists themselves have actually identified that there's roughly 10, um, if, I, if I'm dimensions. getting that number right. 10 dimensions, yes. yep. Yes, there's 10 dimensions, four of which are the only ones that we know. Yes. Um, and so, but as soon as we start toying around with other dimensions, that's what happened at the Tower of Babel. They were toying around with the dimension of unity to reach somewhere, to reach the highest place. And that, I, I think the Tower of Babel was also a metaphor in of itself. It was wanting to reach higher than Earth. It was wanting to, it was wanting to reach higher than physical realm. Yes. It, it was reaching a dimension. It went to another yes. dimension. So the, yes. the reference you're making is from a book I have coming out very soon. And it's yes. actually this understanding is I'm a big Chuck Missler fan. I don't know if you, you know Chuck, but he 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 went home to heaven some time ago, but he really opened up mm. the understanding of some of those arenas. So I began to study it and found out that there are 10 known dimensions that they can prove through math but four of them are knowable to us and the remainder are not. So we can only kind of ascertain four of them, but mathematically we know there's 10. And it's interesting how this stuff works. So you can get into that whole narrative, but there really are different dimensions and angels and fallen spirits have access to interdimensional capacity. And, you know, but as we hear all this news, I really just sense in my heart and I want to speak right now to the viewer watching this. Mm. What we are saying is not separate from you. It's not um, completely different from you. Actually, these spiritual realms and the what we're talking about right now sounds powerful, but let me tell you, there is nothing as powerful as the anointing and the calling of God that is inside of the viewer that is watching this live stream Come right on, now Gabe. or wherever this is played. Come on. And jo- Joseph, I just really sense something as I was even just praying about your ministry. And, b- and by the way, anyone watching, I haven't known Joseph that long. Um, I just really started getting to know you this past year alone and it's barely awesome. this past year. Yeah, it's and great. I just really want to speak to the viewer right now and tell you that there is a reason that God has hid these truths. I know everyone watching right now, you feel like, why does, why not? I mean, I know a lot of people watch you, Joseph, but, but everyone watching, they might think, why do not more people watch this? Why is this not more known? Why are we the only ones who are getting accurate prophetic words about the U.S. election? Why are we the only ones getting accurate prophetic words about actually what's the coming? And there's a feeling of like, well, why is it just us? Listen, it's you because God has completely and Mm. um, delicately chosen you as a particular viewer right now. Praise God. God is trans god is communicating things from heaven to the viewer and the anointing and the calling to fulfill their destiny wherever you are whether you're a teacher a lawyer a doctor uh, a lawn worker um a mailman i don't i don't i don't know what you are but i know that god has chosen this ministry to reach you because it's time that we access what jesus has given us because what's better than cern what's better than the 10 dimensions that's right what's better than the ufos what's better than the fear-mongering <laughs> that the media is giving us 
is the anointing and calling of God that is on this viewer right now. And so I just look to you as the person watching this stream right now. And I, Lord God, we just thank you for anointing you, and calling them. And yes. Father, uh, I wanted to read the scripture in Acts 10 and verse um, Acts 10 and verse 34. Peter said, now I know for certain God doesn't show favoritism with people, but treats everyone on the same basis. And wow. I think some of us, we get used to watching ministries. To you that are watching this, you might be used to watching Joseph and think to yourself, wow, Joseph is great. Joseph is a great prophet. Joseph knows what he's talking about. Stop that. You know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking you about. You are following you, God. You on, are gang. doing everything that God called you to do because Joseph is not the sole occupancy of what God has for us in this time. Amen. He's leading us and we are to follow him as we follow God. And so um, then Peter said, it makes no difference um, what race of people one belongs to. If they show deep reverence for God and are committed to doing what's right, they are acceptable before him. God sent his word to the Jewish people. Fast forward, verse 38, Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and with great power. He did wonderful things for others and divinely healed all who were under the tyranny of the devil, for God has anointed him. Listen, under this time in which we are under the tyranny of lies and fake news yep. and administrations that just come on, uh, Manchurian want to take us, we have been anointed by the same exact Holy Spirit. And to anyone watching this live stream, if you look yourself in the mirror and think that you're any different than the calling that Jesus Christ had, if you think you're, the, if you think you're less powerful than Jesus, you're wrong. And I say that to you in love. <laughs> you are just as powerful as Jesus Christ is. Because last time I checked, Jesus didn't give us a Kroger Holy Spirit. He didn't give us, he didn't give us a backup Holy Spirit. That's and right. So I just want to share that word with you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm popping off here, but no, I'm not sorry. Good but, uh, game. But as he is, uh, last so time I checked, and, and either the scripture says that or it doesn't. And That's I know right. we as humans, we as humans, we like to make exceptions for that scripture. Oh, well, well, uh, I've only been in church once this week. Oh, I've only prayed in tongues like once before. Like I've only read my Bible like this amount of time. Am I really? I don't have a ministry, Joseph. I don't have a full-time ministry, Joseph. See, yeah. there's so many, except God didn't say any of those things last time I checked. Right. Well, it says in Romans chapter 8, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will quicken our mortal flesh. First John chapter 4, as he is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is true, Gabe. You know, the mm -hmm. things we're talking about and getting into, when we talk about UFOs, mm -hmm. all the crazy stuff, first and foremost, we stand firmly on the foundation yes. of the finished works of Jesus. We stand yes. on the Word of God, but there are things happening in the culture that are demanding an explanation. So either people are going to be deceived, yes. or we got to start talking about this stuff. And maybe Gabe and I don't have every detail and finite point right, but I got to tell yes. you, there's something going on, and we're trying to go to the Word of God and bring answers that bring peace and what to do about it in all of this. You know, just making one final point about CERN. CERN is where they fire these, these particle physics at each other at nearly the speed of light. You brought that up about yeah. the pyramids. It's interesting that the speed of light keeps being a topic. And they fire these particles, they collide, and when they collide, they measure them and study what happens. And that is where they begin to get the codes to open up different dimensions, and they talk about it. And this is what Gabe's mentioning in all of this. So there's so much going on in the world right now, Gabe, and the, the way society is going. I believe that the darkness gets darker and darker, but the light will rise to meet it. And I believe God has a secret weapon up his sleeve, and I believe it's us. I believe it's you, me, and everyone who's watching right now in Jesus' name. And I believe that's what's going on. So, Gabe, what do you see happening? Do you see things? Because the Lord has shown me blackouts that would be coming. I've seen food shortages. I believe we can stay off some of this stuff through prayer. It's not a hopeless yeah. uh, resolve. I believe that there's going to be, they're going to try to flip us to a digital currency. I see that coming. Mm. And I believe yeah. we can stay it off or stand against it. I even believe we're going to see radical, wild, unbelievable, strange things manifest that we never yeah. expected to see before. Just comment on some of those things, Gabe. Absolutely. I really think there's also a shaking coming in the churches of America. Come on. I think I think there's cries for authenticity. And many people have said concerning this next generation, Gen Z, millennials, that, oh, they don't go to church. Oh, they don't know what they're doing. Oh, they're just, they're off and they don't know. Well, uh, sure, we're, my generation certainly isn't perfect. And we certainly have many broken things. But I will tell you one thing that my generation is crying for, and it's authenticity. And... I really believe that there's going to come a time where churches are going to realize that they have a choice, that they can either go with a revival move of God for uh, places like Asbury College and yeah. Lee University is now breaking out in revival, that they can either really accept and just agree with what God is doing, or they can stick to their own 
tradition and they can stick to their own ritual and their own, uh, I don't know, whatever it may be. And so I really, I think there's going to be a cry for authenticity in a world that is so digitally flooded with so many things. Yes. I really believe that there's going to rise up a, a few selected ones and just, and by the way, if you're wondering if you're the few selected ones, you are, if you're you watching are. this. Um, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> you are. You don't need to wonder. Don't let your curiosity get you off straight. Uh, and and I, I just, I really think there's going to be a cry for authenticity in the body of Christ. And it's up to us though. I mean, I'm, what I'm saying, I'm not saying that it's for sure going to happen. It's like you said, guys, we got to stand. We got to make a stand here because oh, yeah. if we, if we don't, if we don't make this stand for authenticity and power, if we don't show this next generation the power of the gospel, they, they, they'll find other places of power. They will. And they and will. I think that's just what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of other spheres of power and spiritual things that are going to rise up mainstream. That if we don't if we don't show the power of the gospel, we're going to fall as the as the plan B. As the yeah, backup. And I believe this is where you're anointed. Like you're, you're like leading a movement, whether you know it, like it, it really doesn't matter. You really are leading a major mm -hmm. movement. You know, I've, we just got back from, from Lance's together. We're at Lance Walnuts. Yeah. We're hanging out. Lance is so wonderful. And he's, you know, doing things. We've, we've been out, I've, I'm out to eat with you, Gabe, and people just come up to you and they're like, I've seen you before. How do I know you? And they, they just recognize you because you have so many different places. Your, your videos are going and what God's doing through you. And I believe personally, you're one of the voices of this generation that's going to leave an, lead an online revival. I mean, yes. an online revival. Yes. Now, there'll be yes. many more things you do, but I believe that's one of the catalyst pieces God has placed in you, Gabe. And I just got to tell you, the Spirit of God comes through you so powerfully, and the way God's moving through you, and the way you're reaching people is so profound. Now, I just, I also want to say to everybody, and there's a few more things I want to get into with you today, Gabe, but you have a new book out. You have a new book out. And, and I yes, want to say I do. something about it. It's called Built Different, right? Do you have it with you? Can you hold it? Yes, up? I do. Right here. Yep. So this book it's here is a, is, it's a devotional. And what I want to say yes. about this book is it's for young people. It'll get them on track. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Absolutely. So it's a 90-day devotional to becoming all that God wants us to be in a time where no one knows their identity, in a time where there have been things left out of our intimate walk with God. Um, I know every, many people watching, we've been to church. We've, we've heard sermons before. We've, we've heard about Jesus. But there is an intimacy that God is calling us to have, an understanding of who he has really made us to be. I always explain it like this. LeBron James' son, if he was born in another country in China where they never played basketball, and they never taught him who he was, they never told him who his father was, but let's just say even they told him about his father, but they really didn't tell him his father in the means of they told him, oh, yeah, yeah, your father's a random guy in America. Yeah, he's a good guy. But they didn't really show him the game of basketball. He would never fulfill his destiny. Now, now he, he, he does live in America and he does know who his father is. And he's one of the top prospects for the NBA, even before he even went to college. <laughs> Why? Because he knows his DNA. He but knows, it didn't come yeah. to him. It didn't come to him just in a moment. It didn't come to him just randomly. It came to him from day-to-day -day discipline in understanding of who God has made him to be. And so that's what this book is about. Now, if you can't draw the metaphor yet, it's God, our Father. It's time for us to know him like never before. And when we know him, we'll know ourselves. We'll know our callings, our giftings, our careers, our places that we should go, our relationships that we should be in. So that's what it's all about. Um, it's a fabulous fabulous read for anyone wanting to know their identity maybe you yourself the viewer or if you want to get this as a gift for anyone under the age of 30 or 40 it will really speak in their language and really bless them here's here's something i want to say about your book and you is that gabe when i first met you the holy spirit said to me mm -hmm. this is the young lions i've been telling you about and mm -hmm. so in 2015 i stood in trump tower we did all this and the spirit of the lord began to minister to me and i thought god what's happening here and the lord said i've not graced you to know who's going to win the election in 16. I said, why am I here? I thought you sent me here for this guy and I was going to make some announcement. And I said, is it about America? He said, no, I haven't graced you. And I, and God is my witness. He said, I've told Lance Wall now. I said, okay. Wow. Then from there, I said, Lord, what's going to happen in America? Are we going down? And the spirit of the Lord said to me, no, America is one more round because the young lions are coming. And Gabe, when I met you, you were assigned to me. 
that you are of the young lion. You're going to lead the young lions in, in your space and what God's calling you to do. So I want to encourage everyone to get Gabe's book. This book, Built Different, is truly a war cry of a young lion. It is a, it is a shout into the darkness. It's a shout to cause people to come up higher. And I know that Gabe is for real. This man of God is provoking people online. He's bringing truth online. He's bringing great and clear data online. Gabe does his homework. He does his studies. I encourage you to check out his Facebook, his YouTube, Instagram, uh, but TikTok is where you're really crushing it. But I just, uh, I just want to tell everybody about that. But Gabe, one more thing as we're getting into all of this, and we're seeing all the wars and rumors of wars and things happening. I personally don't believe it's going to get better. I just don't. I believe it's going to be like Matthew 24, get darker and darker, but the light will rise. Talk to us about that for a moment. I'm absolutely with you that things especially aren't going to get better when you have a president that sits on his couch. Well, he's not going to, and, and uh, it's not going to, but what we do know is that light will rise in darkness. Yes. I believe a yes. roar is coming. We're seeing this revival. We're seeing all this. The Spirit of the Lord told us that this year would be a year that was strange, a strange well, year, and strangeness yeah. is happening. I believe we're going to see blackouts uh, at some point, whether it's this year or the coming season, but I sense that will happen. I believe our power grid is in great danger. I believe that I, I saw the word EMP. I see more things with the sea and the oceans and all this stuff. But in all of it, I feel such a sense of peace as they release mm -hmm. these interdimensional beings, this nonsense that they want to bring on the culture, Gabe. I believe that we will stand up as a light in darkness and tell it to step off. Mm -hmm. I believe this generation has mm -hmm. a really great fighting chance. There's something so valuable with the information you have okay. that, that he's 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 he finds the wisdom god knows the wisdom he's given this place is so valuable that those who have found it haven't realized what they found wow they haven't to anyone watching you haven't realized the wisdom and preparation that god has chosen you with what does it say that the God of the universe has chosen us to give us this information before it happens, to give us these accurate prophetic words in a world filled with confusion right now to where we won't be confused by the news. We won't be, we won't be shocked. We won't be surprised when things go crazy, but yeah. instead we'll be the, we'll be the strong towers where people will run into. That's so good. And, wow. I don't know. I just really, as I was praying, I just sensed that about what you do. You're really, you you've been you've been you've been marked as the treasure that people really need to understand what this ministry is a treasure that people need to understand but it's not just it's not because it's you it's because it's god Absolutely. on you it gives glory to god i just everybody that's on here would you agree with me i i don't typically do this but i want everybody mm -hmm. to come into agreement with me for gabe right now and the anointing mm -hmm. that's on him gabe is he's got a, a beautiful fiance named ali it's, it's just tremendous what yeah. they're doing together you guys are both yeah. influencers and i believe that this is your time and god's going to prepare you and protect you so come i on. pray blessing please agree come with on. me everybody is watching right now let's thank agree for gabe all. lord i thank you that it will go from millions to billions that are being influenced Come on. by this voice. I thank you, God, for a real young lion that's taking territory in the middle of a present evil age. I just say over you, Gabe, we believe in you. This audience believes in you. Mm -hmm. Jesus believes in you. I speak protection in the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. over you, that you would take territory mm -hmm. and take more and more ground for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. more than ever before in your life. I thank you, God, that this is Gabe's best year mm -hmm. until the next year. And I speak strength and increase to you right now in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. financially, physically, emotionally, in every area. Mm -hmm. This is your time, man of God, and God needs your voice. You've mm -hmm. seen the face of the Lord. You've seen heaven, and God mm -hmm. is going to open up his good treasuries to you. I sense this so powerfully. I see handcuffs coming off you. I see strength opening mm -hmm. for you. I see golden bird cages opening, and God releasing you to your territory. This is your hour. This is your time. You are God's man, Gabe. Man, I just, I just love you. I believe in you. And you're, you've been such an encouragement to me. I mean, every time we talk, you're just like, Joseph, man, this is going great. You could do it. I'm like, thanks, Gabe. You know, and so thank you for who you are. You know, you're way beyond your years. Thank you for being the voice that you are. This generation needs you. Thank you for leading. Thank you for speaking. We love you, Gabe. Just here for you. Thank you for being here for us. We thank the world of you. Praise God. Thank you. What a blessing. What an honor to hear that from you. Oh, man. Um, what, well, what, 
how how particular our, our our friendship has been and how thankful I am for you. And I mean that. Thank you, Gabe. It means the world to me. Well, what are you up to next, Gabe? Yeah. What's going on in your ministry, your life? Where are things headed for you? Honestly, Joseph, I'm just pushing. I'm pushing right now and, and gaining yep. ground, gaining territory. Um, the channel is about to hit. The channel on YouTube, we're about to hit 2 million subscribers. So we're really excited <laughs> about that. That's great. And we're just, we're just pushing forward. I'm also writing my second book. I'm in the process of doing that about my testimony of when I was in a coma for two and a half weeks and almost dead. And I know that's a whole nother, that's a whole no, nother I, thing. No, I want to mention that. I mentioned that before well. that happened, and then we caught mm -hmm. up after it happened. And Gabe, there's yeah. a marked difference on you. You are someone that has seen heaven. You're someone that has seen the presence of God. Ladies and gentlemen, check out my friend Gabe Perot. You got to check it out. So Gabe, they can find you on YouTube. Can you just tell us where can they find you? Where can everybody follow Yeah, you? any platform, YouTube, um, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, all, all of them. And, uh, and the, the book, you can get it anywhere. I believe it's on discount right now on Amazon. Uh, nice. It's titled Built, Built Different, uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. So they can go check it out anywhere and, and, and get a copy today. And uh, yeah. Um, and Gabe, just for anywhere news, and everywhere. Spell your last name for us just so it's real clear for us. Oh, our yes. P-O-I-R-O-T. Yep. Gabe Perot. And I encourage you to go find him and follow him and buy the book. And thank you, Jesus. Gabe, thanks for being here today. This is great. I know people are blessed by it. And uh, I got to have you back soon if you'd like. I'd really like to have you back if you would, would do that. Praise God. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's already a yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. Well, thanks for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Please repost this. Share this everywhere. Check out Gabe. And uh, I know God's with you. Thank you for being here, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Well, I am so glad you joined us today. You know, we have a lot happening in this ministry and it's because of monthly partners that helps us continue reaching people by the millions. Currently, we have a project and it's called the Diamond Air 62 Project. Affectionately, we call it the Red Eagle One Campaign. This aircraft can take up to seven people. We can travel anywhere in the nation and as mandates get stricter and the times get more and more difficult, we believe we will have our own ability to travel and be a blessing to people all over at no cost to them. I encourage you to become a partner today. You can do that by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. If you partner today, you're going to find that there is a great partner care in our ministry that will reach out to you. They will love you. Different team members will be contacting you. They'll pray with you. They will prophesy to you. They're just going to love on you. And I got to tell you, our partner care is wonderful. These guys love you and they're looking forward to talking to you. Another thing I want to say to you is please consider signing up for our email list. You want to sign up so we can stay in contact because we're building new platforms all the time. If the social media becomes more stringent or difficult or maybe you just can't find us, if you sign up for our email list, it'll be a tremendous blessing for you and for us and we can stay in touch and you can find where we are all the time. Thank you so much for watching today. Jesus is Lord and I want to say a great thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. Together, I think we can change the world.